We're going to give it our best. We're going to make sure it's right. And then it's going to be out. Um, you and I are running it. Some other people within the company are, are running it. Um, but there's a difference when you're talking about building a handful full of units versus a couple of thousand units at a time. And, and maybe that's some of the things we, you know, we'll discuss here and, and, and challenges that we've encountered and, and, and the direction that we're going. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of CVTV Podcast. I'm Carlos, your host, along with my co-host, David Dockin, owner of Corovia. How are you, Dave? Doing well today. How are you? I'm doing well. Doing well, huh? We're getting prepared for uh, our uh, main show, Rap Orlando. Yeah. yeah, that's a big one. Yeah, it's it's our biggest one, right? Yeah, absolutely. Ah, so consider this a Maven Update podcast. Yeah. We're going to give you some insight into what we've been doing with the Maven. And we have made a lot, a lot of progress on this to the repeatability and accuracy. Just before this, I had a call with our engineer, uh, director of engineering, Don, and he's super excited with, with what he's seeing right now. And yes, yeah. in the first revision that we had, people that saw it on the trade show last year at RAP, we were using a magnetic stir and we were using a single rear mirror. You know, the magnetic stir would stir up the, the reagent, change the color, and then we would have a mirror in the back of the cuvee, the holding, and then we yeah. had an electric eye. And then what we would do is the electric eye would, would, would shine a light and it would bounce back and we would get a reading that, of the color. Yeah, and that was the main design, and I think that was the standard design that most companies are using out there. And well, I think with us, Carlos, the, the main thing was we were trying to isolate the the cuvee and the the liquids outside of the unit. That way, there was nothing to cross contaminate or actually interfere with the electronics inside. Correct. A lot of these reagents are are acidic and. And uh, so we wanted to get that outside with a, a barrier in front of it. So we needed optics to be able to to send a, a light pulse through and then back to the machine to read it. Yeah. That, that was the reason we went down this path. And not only that, it was also due to maintenance of the machine. It's super going to be incredibly simple to to take the cuvee cover off and 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 look at and clean your, your cuvee and, and disconnect it and, or replace lines. So these are the, those are the, the, the thought process behind what we were doing. You know, and those things were all great, but because we were thinking outside the box, trying to make it easier for the customer, for the consumer, um, they also presented new challenges yeah. that the other companies were not facing when the cuvee is inside the machine and it's yeah. a lot easier to control it. So we were, we were faced with um, sensitivity uh, challenges to water levels. I mean, yeah. and then on top of that, you know, the light transmission between the, the, the shield and how the, the light reflected, it was just not that good. And on top of that, when you, when you have something that a customer can remove and put back together, when they put it back, are they putting it back Exactly. Correctly. Yeah. So these benefits that we were trying to, to give the customers presented a whole new set of challenges. Yeah. So the new version of the Maven has aligning pins. So when you put this cuvee holder that we call put it back in there, there's pins in there that you have to align to ensure that the cuvee doesn't, it's not, as they say, cockeyed when you put it yeah. in there. Right, Dave? Yeah, I mean, so there's, there's no way it can be off. Like, even with the magnets, you know, you would put it back on, but it mm -hmm. could could have been just off, just, just a, a millimeter. And that, that could have made a impacted the, the, the signal, the light transmission of the test. So we're like, man, this could be a customer service issue. And it's just something that simple as adding these alignment pins. That way it cannot move. It cannot be off-centered. 
And then we had this little contraption, this little trap door that we would slide out and put out okay. and keep the cuvee in place. But unfortunately, the, the, the opening on that little trap door was so small that if it was misaligned, yeah. it would cause problems as well. Yeah. So this wasn't something that was saying it's not going to work because of <laughs> it's just these little things that we find that could have been better that we're thinking could be causing us problems or the user problems as they, you know, use the machine. Yeah. So we were trying to to get this thing to where it's just it's it, it's just rock solid. That that's yeah. the bottom line. Yes. So one of the major redesigns that we've done is the optical path of the light. As we are going through this process of trying to troubleshoot and make it better, we actually found out that the way we were transmitting the light wasn't as efficient as we wanted to. And then we ended up going a different way and we ended up using prisms. Yeah. Yeah. This was a big, big change, you know, and when you yes. see this thing, you, you know, it, it speaks volumes. And again, this is on the inside, but if you're at a show and, and you, you stop by, we can show you what this looks like, but mm -hmm. this was another major improvement, you know, that we, yeah. we figured out along the way. Yeah. Technically we pretty much, I mean, in, in a nutshell, we shine the light on the left-hand side to a prism that then pass the light through the bottom of the cuvee yep. to another prism that then it would bounce it back. Technically, you're doing like a horseshoe. Correct. Also, uh, the prisms add durability. Mm -hmm. You know, they're much better than the mirrors. Yeah. They're I mean, more consistent. Yeah. You know, it was more money. You know, the little yep. mirrors are cheap. And these scientific mm -hmm. prisms, we're getting more money. But I was like, you know what? It's we're gonna do what's what's better. Mm -hmm. I want a quality product, and that and that was in, you know the decision behind that. Yeah. And then the other thing that we've done that we've done also is that we moved away from magnetic steering to air steering yep. or air agitation. Yeah, this you know, was another big, big change. You know, we found it's very difficult to to run a spinner inside of a small little cuvee with a magnet spinning in it. Sometimes hear the chatter of this thing occasionally spinning a little magnet. Um, so that's when we started experimenting. Well, can we do this with air? We already have an air pump in this. Mm -hmm. and uh, And then we found out that, wow, air is so much more efficient and getting a better uh, mixture but like with with everything with life everything comes with a cost yeah and it's yeah. not a monetary cost it yeah. was actually so we were in we were stirring with air using the same uh line tubing mm -hmm. and then we found out that because we're using pinch valves then pressure and little tiny bits of air would remain in the line even though we tried our best and that would cause inconsistencies on the results because you're technically not at sometimes you're adding more reagents sometimes you're adding less reagent mm -hmm. and when you're talking about a cuvee that is this small and this tiny tiny sample of water then a very small inconsistency becomes a big difference Correct. in test sampling yeah so at that point, we had to add a second line that would be strictly air. And a whole nother air pump. And a whole, yes, exactly. So yeah. another air pump to keep, so that to keep the lines, one line is liquids and the other one line is air so that it would keep them separate. And mm -hmm. that would actually, that actually solve the problem. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, other things that we find out are the magnets, the magnets that hold the, the mm. on the on the cuvee holder that we put in there. And you, you think in there, this isn't going to see any water or, or, mm -mm. or moisture because it's up against the flat surface. Sure enough, we see rust on it. I'm like, oh, no, this isn't going to fly. <laughs> I know where, that, where that's going. You know, <laughs> now we can go simple, go to epoxy magnets. Well, no, this changes design. Because mm -hmm. the epoxy adds size to it, so this it, these are just little things that add up to big things sometimes. Yeah, I mean, you know, we thought we could get away with a lot of three D printing on this because there isn't a lot of plastic. 
Mm-hmm. But then we find out, you know, we need to have an injection mold made. So this is another step of added time and and, and yeah. all of the, this kind of things. It's just takes time. Yeah. And then when we decided to go with an injection mold, then we took the decision, you know what? Well, okay, so we're going to make this. So why can't we just make a better cuvee? Because we mm-hmm. everybody knows that the bigger the sample, the better the test is going to be, you know? Yeah. So we decided to go with a cuvee that was much, much bigger than what we were using before. And also drains. We put drains in the bottom before yes. we were having to uh, suck the water out of the cuvee. From the now, top. Now we open a valve and the water drains. Gravity. The drain. Yeah, the, the water drains from gravity. It still has a pump, so we mm-hmm. still pull it out. Yeah. But yeah, and then the bottom of the cuvee is also tapered down a little bit, so it so it's not flat, you know, so it actually, it, it's conducive to draining. Correct. And when you're talking about such a small sample size, even a little bit of uh, reagent or what could be left inside that tiny cuvee could potentially impact the, the next test. So we're like, we got to get this all out. And that was the, the best way to do it, just by opening a drain on the bottom. The, there's no, the gravity is going to basically help pull it all out. There's no yeah. chance of cross-contamination. Exactly. So then, you know, we're, we're doing all these changes. We're mm-hmm. testing reagents. And then we get to one of the reagents, which we were doing some kind of, we were doing agitation by air because, yeah. you know, again, We've done all this testing, and agitation by air is better than stirring. So we thought. Right. <laughs> yeah. So we actually had to create a dedicated stirring magnet that will go into one of the reagents yep. connected to the drive port on the Maven. And then the Maven, when it's time to test it, will automatically turn on that stirring magnet, stir this reagent, and then we use that reagent. Because, yep. again... It's it just one of those reagents that has solids in it that settled yeah. down, and, and, and it's it wasn't not good enough. It right. just wasn't there. Just like if mm-hmm. you were doing a manual test, you're going to sit mm-hmm. there and, and shake up your reagent before, and then you do your drops. We're going to stir it. Um, the the Maven will come with the the stirrer. Yeah, and it's not the, the, you know just to tell people it's not going to be you're not going to have you know six stirs in there mm-hmm. because. Some of the reagents, the viscosity is 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 very heavy, and then they need that stirrer. The other right. reagents, the viscosity is like water, so the air agitation is is perfectly enough, yeah. and it's more than sufficient. So it's only on one reagent that we're going to have to do that. But now that we're speaking about reagents, let's switch to that reagent right here, because if you want the machine to be accurate, if you want the machine to give you good results, you have to provide it with good reagent. You can't right. have... You can't have reagent from everywhere, from anywhere, and expect the machine to give you the, re- the results that you need. Mm-hmm. So for us to ensure that the customer is benefiting from the high quality and high accuracy of the machine, we have to ensure that the customer is using high quality reagents. Yeah. So we decided to create a system that would ensure the quality is always high. Yeah. When you get your reagents, there's going to be a barcode on there. And you're going to scan in, which will then cue our server and and the hydro server that will then say, okay, now you have uh, 75 tests. Mm -hmm. So from there, hydros will keep track of the test. It recognizes that this is an approved reagent from hydros, from CoralView. And that gives us that security. It also, with your or the customer's uh, blessing allows us to have access to look at their test and we can see based on that barcode we can see the a lot number when that reagent was made uh, who it was shipped to we can track it maybe we run into a problem somewhere along the way with reagent we need to be able to track that down and we can do that with this barcode system so it'll right. be a simple process, really. You're just going to scan it in. It'll bring up the Hydros app and uh, register the reagent, and you're good to go. Um, and this, this, this was a, a big undertaking, you know, the, from a software side. Carlos, mm-hmm. says it took a lot of time. And, and uh, yeah, but we, uh, 
we'll have that on display as well, how it'll work uh, if you're in, in Orlando or, or at any other trade shows the uh, rest of this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we are still beta testing it, and that's how we learn. That's how we learn what's going on in this. We are, um, there's no pro- there's no projected release at this time right now. We're not, we're not ready to say that because at the end of the day, we don't want to, um, um, we don't want to create that expectation and then not deliver. We, unfortunately, we've been there. We don't want to do it again. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, we, we really, really want to thank the people out there that are using hydros that are supporting us and that they're being patient. Mm-hmm. Um, if you are going to stop by at RAP Orlando 2025 in the next, uh, you know, few days, yeah. please stop by and say hello um, and come on over. We'll show you. We'll show you firsthand the changes that we've made. Yeah, we want to show you. We've actually, we've been working hard. Um, mm-hmm. And if we don't see you in Orlando, we'll be in New York and we'll be in L.A. later this year. So, yes. Exactly. So stop by. You got many opportunities. Stop by. Thank you so much for watching and listening. And um, until next time.